So in order to give you a better sense of exactly how VS Code manages um, different types of settings and configurations, I want to go through the process of setting up one of the functionalities that I described in one of our introductory videos, um, which is the ability to have VS Code automatically format your code to make sure it meets style guidelines every time that you save your file. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the system editor, which is going to give us the ability to um, turn on the setting that we should have VS Code try to format a file every time that we save it. Um, and so, uh, well, actually, first, let's open up a Python file. So here's a little um, Python file that I have opened up. And we'll add a few more, 7 plus 5, y equals um, 7 plus or 5 plus 9. So what I have here are a couple entries that are not actually style guide consistent. In Python, um, the general agreement is that you should have spaces between these types of operators whenever you are um, writing your Python code. If you're writing your code for yourself, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't buy, abide by these types of things. Um, but having good consistent style actually ends up being very important if you want to share your code. And that's true for two reasons. One is people just get used to looking for certain patterns visually. And so if everyone formats their code similarly, you're going to get used to looking for the same patterns. The other thing is that if people are committing things to Git or GitHub, you want consistent style across a um, entire code base, right? You don't want people writing code one way in for one function and one way for another one. Um, and these auto formatters are very effective because they help deal with the issue that um, people may disagree about style. And this way, there's just kind of an automatic mechanism for ensuring that everyone is dealing with it. So there's a number of different ways that we can actually get to the top level settings for the system. Um, the first one, as in most programs, is you go up to the main drop down on a Mac, you go to preferences, and you click on settings. Um, the other option is there's this little wheel down here, which can bring you to settings. And then the final option is we can open up the command palette and type command shift P and ask for settings. And then we're going to open settings and notice that we're actually opening settings with this UI. We'll discuss what that means in a minute. So we can open any of those that are going to look roughly like this. Um, commonly used settings, one of the biggest ones are the text editor. So we want to go into the text editor. We're going to go to formatting and we're going to select format on save. So what this basically says is if a file has an extension that is managing all of the files for that language, in our case, the Python extension manages all of our Python files. If that has a formatter enabled, any time that we try to save um, our Python file, it's going to try to reformat it. So let's test it now. Command save. And VS Code very nicely pops up and says, hey, it looks like you haven't actually installed the formatter that is set as the default. So I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to tell it that I want it to install. VS Code, just very friendly, it opens up Conda, does this for you. You can also do this yourself by hand if you would prefer it that way. It's going to install PEP8 or auto PEP8, which is one of these code formatters. Now it's been installed. And so if I change the file and then save it, we see that we get this um, change in the formatting gap. So now there's these spaces next to the, um, the equal sign. Now, auto pep8 is one of a number of different formatters that are out there. And as you can see, it doesn't actually care about the fact that the plus sign is right next to the numbers that are next to it. And it doesn't care that I use single quotes around the word, the word hello. Now, most packages that I'm aware of have increasingly been moving towards a formatter called black. And the idea of black was most code formatters have lots of settings and tweaks, and you can like set it to format the code exactly the way that you want. Um, black is a formatting package that only does one thing. It formats it the way it wants to format things. There are no settings. You don't get to make choices. Um, and this has actually turned out to be a real advantage because it means that when everyone is trying to commit stuff to the same GitHub repository, the fact that there is only one formatting way the code can be formatted ends up getting rid of lots of disagreements and fights about exactly how code should be formatted. Um, the name, if you care, comes from um, when Henry Ford, the father of the modern um, uh, industrial 
the assembly line and kind of the first mass produced car used to say of his first car, you can have the Model T, his first car, in any color you want as long as that color is black. And so in the same way, black doesn't have settings. So what we're going to do now is go change the default formatter from within the Python extension. There's a couple ways we can actually go about this. So one is we open the extensions tab and we click the little gear next to the Python extension and we open the extension settings. What this does is opens up this setting tab, but it pre-populates the search bar with this at extension colon and then the name of the extension, such that the only settings that we're going to see in this drop-down menu are the ones that are for this particular extension. So um, we can actually accelerate this process a little bit by also adding to this search that we want to look for things with format in their name. And here we find the provider for formatting, and we're going to change the default formatter to black. As I said, I think it's it's nice that black doesn't have settings. Nobody fights over it. Um, and that's just, you may not like exactly how it formats things, but it's better to accept it than to fight with everyone all the time. So we're going to save that setting and we're going to come back here, make another modification and save it. It's again going to tell us that black is not installed. We're going to install black. Great. Make another modification so I can save this. I'm going to save this file. And now it's done black style formatting. So black doesn't like single quotes around strings unless you have to be using them. It likes spaces around all the operators. Everything's set. So now anytime you save a Python file, it's going to automatically format that file. As I said, though, our goal here is not just to talk about formatters, but to talk about settings within Python. So Previously, the way I kind of showed you this is you can find the settings section through a number of different tools, such as the command palette, and you get this nice graphical user interface that includes some nice descriptions for what's all of these tools. But what's actually going on within VS Code is that all of the modifications you have made to settings are being stored in a JSON file. So if I do command shift P and I type in settings again, as I mentioned before, one of the options is open settings UI, which is um, open settings with a user interface. The other option is open settings JSON. And when we open settings JSON, what this is doing is opening up the actual JSON file that stores all of the places where we have made modifications to the default settings of all of these different systems. Right, so right here, when we told the editor that we wanted it to format when we save, that's now this line in this entry. And here's where we set Python formatter to black. When you synchronize, excuse me, synchronize your settings um, with VS Code on the cloud, most of what you're doing is just saving this JSON file, right? So this is basically kind of the lower level representation of what you're getting when you look at that nice higher level settings menu. Now, the same thing also happens to work for keyboard shortcuts. So we talked about this before. There's both the nice interface that we worked with before, and then there's also the JSON version, right? So in previous videos, we made some modifications to this, like changing the keyboard shortcut for Jupyter selection, right? We changed this command to be shift enter because I decided that I like that as my keyboard shortcut. And um, we changed the win settings for that so that it would run um, in a slightly broader set of contexts. Keyboard shortcuts have the exact same property. So if I do Command Shift P, Keyboard Shortcuts, you can see we have both this Open Keyboard Shortcuts generically, but also Open Keyboard Shortcuts JSON. And in the JSON, we see the list of all of the modifications that I have made to the various settings about how I think that um, the keyboard shortcuts should work, right? And so this kind of consists all of the information about how I have tried to customize my keyboard shortcuts. So as you're making modifications in Python, in general, you may find that you like doing most things through the user interface because it gives you the opportunity to see the help files and a list of everything that's available. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really helpful to understand that what lies behind everything that you do in terms of modify, modifying your environment is that they're just being stored in one of these little JSON files. So anyway, that's all I have on settings. Um, uh, I think the next video will end up being one on how to install R. 
Um, I know a lot of people like working with R in the same environment that they like working with Python, so I'm going to show you how to set that up. Um, and if you have other requests, please put them in the comments, and I'll try to add other videos as appropriate. Thanks so much.